I'm Patrick Byers, horticulture field specialist with University of Missouri Extension. Let's talk about whip and tongue grafting. Whip and tongue grafting is a common way to propagate fruit trees and it's a very straightforward skill to learn. The first step is to prepare your workspace. Try to use a surface that you can clean and sanitize. Rubbing alcohol is a good material to spray on the surface where you're going to graft. Make sure you have plenty of elbow room so that you don't feel crowded in. You're going to be using knives here. Keep a first aid kit handy in case you nick your fingers and it's always good to have adequate lighting. Now the first step in a whip and tongue graft is to look at your rootstocks. And here we have some apple rootstocks. Here's an example of an apple rootstock. Here's the root system. Here's the uh, top part that we're going to actually graft on. Okay, so we'll lay that down. The next step is to take a look at the cyan that we have available. I've got a bag of cyan wood here and I've selected a piece that is close to the same diameter as the, uh, the rootstock and you can see that here. It's also very important to remember orientation. When you're cutting your cyan wood, if you make a sloping cut on the bottom, that helps you identify the basal or lower part of the cyan so that what you graft, the buds are right side up. If you graft upside down, it will not work. Once we've selected the rootstock and the scion, the next step is to prepare the scion with the cuts. Okay, the first cut, that's the whip cut, is made with a sharp blade. You can use a, a knife, certainly, but I prefer to use a box knife because I know the blade is sharp. So make a good, straight, smooth cut, roughly an inch to an inch and a quarter in diameter. You can see the cut that we've made there, okay? That's the first step. Now we make the whip or the back cut. And so using our blade, we'll go one third of the way down from the point of our cut, right about in there, putting the blade in place and using a rocking action on the blade, we cut into the wood. Now, notice how close my finger is to the blade. You've got to be careful when you're doing this. Do it very slowly, very deliberately. Always stay in control. Rock the blade like I'm showing you here. And you'll notice that we're making a cut. It doesn't follow the grain of the, the uh, rootstock, but it follows the uh, the uh, cut that we made initially. And so we want to cut roughly two thirds of the way down. Okay, so you can see what I've done here. Here's the cut. You can see where, I, where I've made the, the back cut or the, uh, the uh, tongue cut. Okay, we'll make a similar cut on the rootstock, choosing a smooth area between buds. You want them to be uh, approximately the same length. You'll notice my uh, cut on my scion piece is a little bit short. Expert grafters don't have to do any whittling, but I have no qualms about doing a little whittling to get the cuts to be the same size. The key though is to have a very smooth cut on the rootstock and on the scion so that they will fit closely together. So now we make that same back cut that we saw on the rootstock. Again, using our blade, being very careful and deliberate and a nice rocking motion cutting roughly, starting one third of the way down from the point and cutting to about two thirds of the way down. You can see how we've made that cut there. Okay, now we'll place the two pieces together and our goal is to interlock the uh, cuts that we made. Okay, you can see how we've done that here behind my hand. The uh, tongue or the uh, back cut on the scion interlocks with the tongue or the back cut on the rootstock. At this point now, we'll line up the, uh, the uh, cambial layers on both sides. If our scion and rootstock are the same diameter, it happens naturally. If there is a difference, then it's important to line them up as best you can on one side. It's a good point now to shorten back our scion piece to three buds, one, two, three. So here the cuts have been completed. Next step is to wrap this with parafilm to stabilize it and keep it from drying out. So starting, I like to start below the cut. We'll wrap it tightly to draw the pieces together. Again, always making sure that we have good alignment of the rootstock and the scion. Wrap it all the way around. Like we see here. Make sure that we cover all of the cut surfaces. And there we have our completed whip and tongue graft. So to review, select your rootstock and your scion so that they are the same diameter prepared the area where you're going to graft. Make sure you keep it clean. Make sure you've got plenty of elbow room. Keep a first aid kit handy in case you nick your fingers and good lighting. Lay the scion and the rootstock down so that you have the proper orientation of the buds. Make the initial cut. Make the, uh, the uh, tongue or the back cut. Put the pieces together. Wrap it with parafilm. And here's the finished graft.